Okay, Mr. Kosky, do you, do you have any stories you'd like to share about Masha? I remember a story about Masha. It was about three years ago. We're walking down Emmett in Jerusalem. We've just eaten a massive meal of boba fur. You can breathe with her talk. The sun was shining very brightly. And Masha suggested that we take a walk in the park to catch some rays. We had taken our shoes and socks off and dangling our feet in the water when we heard rustling from the bushes up ahead. I was quite scared and thought we should head back to the main area of the park. Masha was intrigued. After her initial yell, I wanted to investigate what had made such a noise to disturb the gentle tranquility of the park. So she got up carefully and crept up towards the bush, saying, Hello! Every so often, her voice started quite softly, but gradually her volume increased and her tone became harsher. Uh, yeah, I'll bring you in a sec. Uh, all of a sudden, a pixie flew out of the bush. Yeah, hold on. It started to circle Masha, spinning very quickly, releasing a trail of dust in its path. Then, the tiny pixie stopped and let out an enormous laugh. It wasn't loud, for the laughter had only come from something so small. But for the ears of a pixie, the laugh was very loud indeed. Masha was looking awfully astonished by this point, and inquired to whom this miniature creature was, and why he was rustling in the bushes in Jerusalem, but in her head, was sure she was most probably hallucinating from a large ingestion of beef burger. So she went with the flow. Hello, Mr. Pixie, Masha said, as if talking to a magical creature were a normal thing to do. Who are you? <sighs> oh, huh? I am the magical Zionist Pixie from the Lake of Jerusalem. My name is Fred, replied the freckled fairy, and I have come to show you a story, Masha, the giant from Stanmore. Masha jumped back a little, startled by the fact that Fred knew her name, and wondered if Pixies thought all humans were giants, or only her. Why have you come to show me a story? For there is much for you to learn about Israel, Fred said. Yeah, yeah, whatever, hot weather, lovely beaches, fit Israelis. What else is there to know, retorted Masha. There is lots for you to know. Come with me and we shall find out. And in that instant, Fred threw some golden dust up into the air and it began to rain down warm, hazy rays, as if the sun had magnified itself upon the earth, but in a comfortable way. It got brighter and brighter, and Masha had to put on her disproportionately sized sunglasses. Then the scene had changed. In the blink of an eye, she was staring at people her own age, but everything was black and white. Where am I? said Masha to Fred. The real question is, when am I? Masha didn't like what Fred had just said, and they had a debate for several minutes about the grammar of his last statement. Enough! Fred shouted. It is 1880. We are in Israel, or Palestine as it is called now. I don't recognize this area. There is mud all around me, mosquitoes biting everyone, and everyone's working so ever so hard. Are you sure we are in Israel? And not on some reality TV show set? Yes, we are in Israel. Ask the people. Speak to them. Masha went around the farm she was at, speaking to all the workers, learning about their plight of survival, dealing with malaria, constant attacks, and the terrible swampy land. She asked about where they came from, and she was mesmerized to learn that they fled anti-Semitic lands to come to an area that she wouldn't want to visit for more than five minutes, let alone live in. Masha turned to Fred and said, Fred, did you hear what Yossi was saying he'd been doing? But before she had finished talking, she was being whisked off again through space and time, but on this occasion, in colour. Masha was standing on a hilltop, 
surrounded by soldiers guarding a fort. The soldiers were kids, no older than herself. She spoke to them about their lives and their jobs and the sacrifices that they had and still were making. Where are we? she asked Fred. 1967, he replied. Masha stood there amazed that she, she was witnessing the heroism going on around her and the mighty battles that the boys were partaking in. Soon, Masha and Fred jumped through the cosmos, that is space and time again, and again as easy as jumping on a space hopper that Masha once got as a birthday present until her older sister Tamar broke it. Each time, Masha explored the world around her, learned so much of the people there and their love for the land she would holiday in so often. After meeting a bloke called Patrick, who had changed his name to Moses, and leading the people of Israel to a land called Canaan, Fred said it was time to go home, and within a split second, Masha had returned to the park where everyone was. Thank you, Fred. But as she was saying it, she turned around and couldn't see Fred anymore. Fred! Fred! Masha cried out. Who are you shouting for? I asked. I am looking for Fred the Pixie, Masha said concretely. I think you ate too much. But Masha looked puzzled. Soon she realised that no one but her could see the magical fairy called Fred. And that her trip was special and only for her. It was to teach her that Israel was more than a holiday destination, but a haven for her and her home, where roots had been planted years before she was ever born. As soon as she got home, Masha opened her Aliyah file and taught all she knew about her newfound Zionist zealousness and inspired all around her to join her in the Holy Land. And three years later, she was making Aliyah herself. Some say the pixie will pick her up at the airport. Others say it was an intoxication by some bad meat. But all think it was the best trip and story ever. <laughs> <laughs>